In today's notes, we're going to investigate how to bisect an angle and also, too, at the end, how to bisect a segment. So to start, you will need a compass, a straight edge, and I'm also going to ask that you have a protractor. just so you can verify your measurements. Okay, so given the following scenario, I'm just going to read and highlight below in our picture. Joey and his brother Jimmy are working on making a picture frame as a birthday gift for their mother. Although they have the wooden pieces for the frame, so here are the wooden pieces, or the before on the left, they need to find the angle bisector to accurately fit the edges of the pieces together. So here, we want to go from, in this picture, this 90 degree angle So we want to bisect that. So over here, we have a 45 degree angle in order to fit the frame nicely together, together to form that 90 degree angle when you put the pieces together. So we need to bisect and have two 45 degree angles here. Using your compass and straight edge, Show how the boys bisected the corner of the wooden pieces below to create the finished frame on the right. So I want you to take a few moments and investigate with your compass how we're going to do this. So play around uh, for a moment and then when you're done, I want you to go to my webpage to watch this video on angles and trim. So you will pause my video open up my website and under um, right there on the main screen I have a link to the video on angles and trim. It's a very short video and the speaker is going to show how to bisect an angle. I want you to make sure the volume is up okay because it's kind of hard to hear and then two I want to see if you can identify the speaker's error. So I want you to pause now and go to my website to watch the video and then come back to this video to watch the remaining lesson. Okay, now that you've watched the video, okay, we're going to start now. Um, the error, the error that the speaker made was that the tool that he used to bisect the angle is not called a protractor, but a compass. So the speaker called the tool a protractor when it should be a compass. Okay? Next page. At the top, I'm just going to read, consider how the use of circles aids the construction of the angle bisector. Be sure to label the construction as it progresses and to include your labels in your steps. So continue to experiment as we experimented on the front and now that you know how to bisect the angle, I want you now to experiment with the angles below to help you determine the correct steps for the construction as you're going to list the steps to bisect the, um, an angle below. Okay. Remember, we have to be very precise and um, use correct vocab without using our pronouns as it or they. Be very specific with what you're talking about. So I'm going to go through the steps. You can pause the video now if you'd like to explore experiment uh, and then restart the video to see how you do it. So with the angle on the left, I'm going to get out the compass. I'm going to put the compass point right at the vertex of the angle and I'm going to make an arc that intersects both sides of the angle. You can always take your straight edge and 
um, continue on or extend the given rays, but I'm just going to start by making sure that the arc, which is part of our circle, extends both rays of the angle. You may be able to use the same compass setting and looking at it, I can tell that I can. Now you're going to take your compass point and put it on the intersection of the arc or the circle and one of your given rays and draw another arc. Okay, I'm going to put it on the other point of intersection with my arc uh, and given ray and draw another arc so that it intersects with this one here. It almost looks like an X. You can go back and tidy up and erase some of these markings you don't need, but you can just leave them. Now I need to put a point here, okay, at that intersection, and we're going to draw a ray from the vertex of the angle through that point of intersection. And here's our angle bisector. Okay, let's do it one more time with the angle on the right and then we'll talk about how we list our steps. We you can also take the protractor to verify that your construction was correct or you did a very nice job. We'll see how accurate you are or you were in your construction. Okay, so let's draw our arc and make the X. Putting it at this point of intersection and this point. So as you can see, in keeping the compass setting the same this time, they did not intersect. So I'm going to get rid of these two markings and just open up my compass some more. Okay. So now I'm done with the tool, I'm going to close that, and through that point of intersection, I'm going to draw my ray. Okay, now I'm actually going to um, take out the protractor tool so that we can verify that we did, in fact, bisect the given angle. Math tools, protractor. Okay, so bear with me. So you take a moment, you can pause my video and line up your protractor and measure. I'm gonna start by measuring the given angle first. So I know how large it is to see if I did bisect it correctly. I'm pretty close. I've also done this on paper too rather than up here on the board. I get that right there. And if you're having a hard time um, seeing exactly where it crosses, remember you can always take and extend with your pencil that marking here so that you know where it crosses. And I have from zero, I'm using the inner, from zero right here can't make a mark on the tool. I'm following along to 136. So I have, let's uh, actually give this angle, move this off to the side, some vertices, and we'll use this in our steps. So we'll call this we'll use A, B, C, and D. So to start, I have the measure of the angle as 136 degrees. So when I bisect it, the measure of angle BAD should be equal to the measure of angle CAD, which should be 68 degrees. So let's measure those. Okay, so to measure, I'm actually going to line this up with the ray that I've extended. And I can see if I extend, or actually I don't need to extend because it's long already, that starting here at zero, I'm going over and right here it is, can't make an arrow, 
uh, 68 degrees. So we are correct in our measurement. So the protractor tool we use as a tool to measure angles, not in our construction. Now to list the steps. So you want to assume again, you're st you have to communicate to someone who's just given the angle how to bisect. Okay, so um, the first thing we need is we need to have a name for our angle. So what I did was is I labeled or gave the given angle vertices. Okay, I don't necessarily need all three. So to start, I only need this angle here or that vertice. So I'm going to call it um, angle A. So step number one is to label the vertex of the angle as A. Okay. The first thing I did was is I drew that arc, okay, so that it intersected both sides of the rays um, of the angle. So step number two, now that I've actually labeled as vertex A, I can tell the person who's doing the construction to draw circle A. So step number two, draw circle A. Okay, when we talk about the circle, we always need to name the center and state the radius so they know how big to draw it. So center A, and in this case, they can do any radius as they can always extend the rays of the angle. Going back up to the picture, and we can highlight where we're at. So this is this step I just wrote down here. And I don't want to refer to it as an arc. I'm going to say draw circle A, even though we don't need to draw the whole circle, and it is an arc of a circle. Label the intersection. So the next part is to make this X. Before they can make the X, this, these are arcs or circles, which are formed by putting the compass point here and here. Whoops, that should have been here earlier. Um, point B is actually right there. Okay, you don't have to, I was just labeling the angle itself. You don't have to put it um, here. Okay, you can put it here or here, but I would suggest putting it here as um, later on we'll refer to um, the arc up here using circle B. So make sure that you put point B right here. Okay, so to make this X above, we need to be able to communicate where, um, to the person who's doing the construction, where to put the compass point. So we're going to say label the points of intersection of the circle and the rays of the angle as point B and C. So number three, label the intersection of circle A with the ray, the rays of the angle as B and C. Now they can draw circle B and circle C to get this X. So number four. So draw so number four and five are both draw circles. We're going to draw circle B and circle C. Stating the center and radius, circle B has center B, circle C has center C. Okay, the radius, now it doesn't matter the radius when you draw these two arcs, as long as they intersect. Okay, so to make it um, so that they always intersect or to communicate to the person how we draw those arcs, what radius to use, you can actually use radius BC. So if you actually open it up to that width, that will have, um, cause the two circles or arcs to intersect. 
So we're going to use radius BC. Or CB, it's the same thing. And then we want to label that point of intersection of those two circles as um, D. Step number six, label the intersection of circle B and C. Circle B and circle C as D. Okay, and this point of intersection will always be in the interior of the angle. Last step. So the angle bisector is this ray right here. So we just need to label that ray or draw ray AD. So last step number seven is to draw. And you don't have to use the words. You can use our symbols that we learned the very first day. Draw ray AD. Next page. It states that a correct construction means that one half of the original angle will coincide exactly with the other half so that each point of one ray of the angle maps onto a corresponding point on the other ray of the angle. So what that means is if you were to fold your paper, this ray right here, if you were to fold along ray AJ, that should land on this ray here, okay, as this as the ray AJ is in the middle. On the diagram below, label the corresponding points of B and E, uh, or B and E, as D and G respectively. So that means when you fold the paper along AJ, B is to land on D, respectively means in that order, and E would land on G, and we need to label that. Now join each point to its corresponding point with a line segment and then label the points of the intersection as C and D, or C and F respectively. So go ahead and take the time to fold your paper. So pause the video and do the fold and map and mark where points D and G would land. Now, since I can't fold, I can fold my paper and I did, but in showing you on the board, when you connect B to D, it should be a straight line so that BD is perpendicular to AJ. So if you used your straight edge, tools, math tools, if you use the straight edge, you should be able to align your tick mark with the ruler so that it lays flat, okay? So point B will land right here. So that would be your D. And then lining up the straight edge here, E, move that over a bit, will land here when you fold. So this would be G, okay? So we labeled point B and G as you fold. And then it says to label the points of intersection as C and F. So this line segment intersects ray AJ here. So there's C and EG intersects ray AJ here at F. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is drawn perpendicular. It says, use your compass to determine the relationship between EF and EG. So taking the tool, I'm going to use it to measure what's true about the length of E, uh, F, and EG. So lining up my pencil, it, I'm going to make a mark here. If I take and flip my compass around, 
it's the same width. Or this circle F, okay, has the same radius, FG and FE. These two segments are congruent. So let's determine if that's the same for CD. Whoops. Go down a little bit more. CD and CB. And it is. So this is the same here. So AJ, let's make note what's going on here. Ray AJ is a line of reflection. Remember, AJ is the angle bisector. So the angle bisector is a line of reflection of a point in its image. And we know that AJ is perpendicular to BD and it's also perpendicular to EG. Since we measured the lengths here, so use your compass to determine the relationship between these two, these two segments are congruent. So I can also state that C and F are midpoints of BD and EG respectively. Our last bullet, use your protractor to determine the relationship between the angle measure. So I want you to pause and go ahead and measure. I know we talked about it, but the relationship between EFG, or EFJ rather, this angle right here, well, we talked about this being perpendicular 90 degree angle, so this should be a 90 degree angle as well as we have a straight angle right here. Okay, so the measure of angle, now even though I didn't take out the protractor to verify that, I want you to take the protractor to verify these measurements. GFJ, it's 90 degrees. So our conclusion in the box is two points are symmetric with respect to line L if and only if was our line of reflection can also be seen as a line of symmetry. This only happens if the line L, or our angle bisector, is also the perpendicular bisector of the segment. I can call it the perpendicular bisector because AJ intersects BD at its midpoint since I measured and CD was congruent to BC and I have a right angle here that's a perpendicular and a bisector divides a segment into two congruent segments. So it is symmetric or two points are symmetric with respect to line L if and only if it is the perpendicular bisegment of the segment that joins the two points. Last page. Now we're actually going to take a look at how to do that perpendicular bisector construction. So take a moment, pause the video, investigate with the tools, um, using what you know about the construction of an angle bisector. Okay, try to apply that here. And then we're going to list the steps below on how to bisect a segment. So go ahead and pause and then we'll do the construction. To do the construction, um, and that's actually list, rather than do it all first, let's actually list the steps as we do the construction. So the first thing you want to do is put the compass um, point on the endpoints, okay, so that we can draw an arc or a circle. So in order to give someone instructions on how to do this, let's label each endpoint as A and B. So step number one, label the endpoints of this segment as A and B. Okay, now we're going to draw circle A and circle B. And I'm going to draw it so that it has the radius AB. 
So I'm going to draw a circle A first. We'll do that in orange. Now I'm going to draw a circle B. We'll change that to green. And we have two points of intersection. You don't need to draw the full circle because all we really need is that x above and the x below. But you can, you can leave it. So no need to erase. So step number two, draw circle A. Um, center A, radius A, B. Step number three was to draw circle B. Center B and then radius AB as well. Now let's label each point of intersection of circle A and circle B as C and D. So number four, label the points of intersection. of circle A and circle B as C and D. And then our last step, number five, we'll mark it and then go back up to the picture, is just to draw line CD. And CD is the perpendicular bisector. You can take your protractor to verify your construction and so that um, CD line tool actually intersects AB at a 90 degree angle. So take your protractor and verify. And you don't need to take your ruler because you're supposed to be using a straight edge, but you can also take your compass again to verify that your widths, okay, the segment here from the point of intersection and I'm just going to put an M here because the perpendicular bisector intersects a segment at its midpoint. So my M stands for midpoint. So the length of AM, if I move my compass over, should be the length of um, AM and BM should be congruent segments. Their length's the same, and they are. Okay, to finish the note page at the bottom, it says use your compass, examine the following pairs of segments. So segment uh, AC, let's actually draw these segments in. So AC and BC. Take the compass, that's examined. So let's take a look at their lengths. So if I open up, put my compass point in the tip of the compass at one end, that's the same. And if I come up and just rotate the compass, that's also the same. How about AD and BD? So AD and BD. Whoops, I gotta get the compass out of there. I'll leave that marking there. But let's take a look and measure those lengths. So bringing the pencil in, that length, is it the same? Rotate it around, yes it is. And then finally, um, AE, do that in blue, and BE. AE, BE. And I'm actually gonna put it back on the point that's on the perpendicular segment, because I see that right angle as it's easy to just rotate about that point. So AE and now is the same for BE, it is. So all of these segments are uh, congruent. So using notation, I'm gonna say the length of AC is equal to the length of BC, the length of ED is equal to the length of BD, and the length of AE is equal to the length of BE. And then I'll mark in my picture, the segments are congruent. So since this, since um, the one segment from A to B is already noted with the two dash lines right here at this midpoint, um, I can't use two dash lines, so I'll use one, one, 
one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, based on your findings, fill in the observation below. Any point that's on the perpendicular bisector, and I knew it was a perpendicular bisector to start because of this right angle here and these two markings. So I knew it was a perpendicular bisector of AB. Any point on the perpendicular bisector of a line segment is blank from the endpoints of the segment. So look at the point E on the perpendicular bisector. That was the same distance to A as it was to B, which are the endpoints. Point D on the bisector was also the same distance from the endpoints, and point C was also the same distance. So to say the same distance, that vocab term is equidistant. And we are finished with the notes.